Hey, hey, period party listeners. Welcome back to another episode. My guest is Dr. Jabin Moore, a doctor of chiropractic who works in person and virtually with people to assist them in overcoming chronic health conditions and symptoms. He specializes in Lyme disease, Lyme co-infections, pans and pandas, autism, parasitic infections, environmental toxicities, and mitochondrial support. In this episode, he shares a personal story of going from being an award-winning college athlete to not being able to get out of bed at age 25 due to Lyme disease that you're definitely going to want to hear. The main focus of this interview is his expertise on Lyme disease and co-infections that can accompany Lyme. He explains how these infections impact our overall health and hormones, and specifically how they can flare menstrual cycle problems too. We also dive into the connection between Lyme, mold, and parasites. If you've been struggling with chronic health conditions and you feel like you've tried everything and or you have symptoms that just won't go away no matter what you do and you're looking for answers, this episode is going to be a game changer for you. Also, a reminder that the Fix Your Period Collective, a first-of-its-kind membership, is coming soon. Users will take a detailed period quiz, and their unique answers will be displayed on a dashboard with lots of pretty icons and descriptions that will help you understand what is happening with your cycle. If you want to see what it will look like and feel like, get on the wait list for this history-making membership program. Head on over to bit.ly FYP Collective. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash F-Y-P Collective. Hi, Jabin. Thank you so much for being on the podcast with me today. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm kind of excited to talk about this. It's been hitting hard for me, the conversations of how to appropriately treat Lyme, but also pay attention to hormones and what's going on so that you can either help stabilize them or, you know, get them back on track. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This is exactly what I wanted to talk about on the podcast today. And you had mentioned that you had Lyme disease in your 20s. Can we talk a little bit about how that has shaped your practice and how you help people heal? So definitely, you know, I was a high school collegiate athlete and that's what I thought I was going to be doing. I thought I was going to be this sports medicine doc. That's what I always wanted to be. I wanted to do it more in the natural realm because my options were either chiropractic or sports medicine, like orthopedic surgeon. I didn't want to be the guy that ended people's careers, cutting their knees open. So I was like, well, chiropractors get you back on the field when you're injured because that's what I would go to. So that's that's what directed me that way. But while I was in Cairo school, Lyme disease, I guess, was building up on me. I don't really know when I was bit. I didn't have the tick uh, the, the bullseye rash, but I just think back and I remember, you know, uh, got to college, was living in a moldy basement that was really musty, saw the mold growing up the walls. My joints started aching, food allergies, sinuses, all these things started adding up. By the time I got to Cairo school, now it's joint pain and brain fog and erectile dysfunction, which is a whole topic that just frustrated the heck out of me because it's emotional for a guy. Like it's super emotional for a guy. It's a point of pride. It's a point of, are we going to be able to reproduce? It's all these thoughts of, am I going to be able to have a family are going through my head? And I'm, by the way, I'm only 25 years old when this reached its peak of how bad things got. And so when I was in practice, I, or when I was in school, I was searching for someone to help me because I'm 25 years old. I'm a Midwestern boy. So starting a family and having kids is kind of the the thought process around that age range. And, and for me, it was like, just panic of, is this even going to ever happen? And after searching for functional medicine doctors who recommended L-arginine and some other things and medical doctors who said, oh, this just happens when you're 25 sometimes and recommended Viagra (laughs) and, and going to acupuncturists and everybody, nobody Nobody had anything for me that worked. And so I was really frustrated. And finally, somebody at a conference for for uh, a lot of docs, functional medicine doctors, like, hey, have you ever thought about Lyme disease? And I said, no, tell me more. And they're like, well, I don't really know anymore. And I go, so do you know anybody that does? And they're like, uh, not really. So then I was just left with like, okay, I guess I'm going to go down this rabbit hole. I found somebody, Dr. Alan Lindsley in Wisconsin, who actually ended up treating me. And within two weeks, erectile dysfunction decreased significantly and started getting things back going. And I know we're talking about probably a lot of female hormones in this podcast, but my hormones at 30, my testosterone got up over 900. So like an average male is in the 500 range. I got up over 900 and 
So you can fix your hormones. You can get rid of erectile dysfunction and you can get through Lyme. And there are real root causes of hormone problems that are not just your hormones suck. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. First of all, you have the boy version of my girl version story because <laughs> I was on the pill and, and then also had all of these seemingly unrelated problems in my early twenties. I also had no sex drive and I was convinced that there was something seriously wrong with me because how could I be 23, 24 and not have any sex drive at all? Um, and then like vaginal dryness and I mean like all fun stuff, you know? So hearing your story is just so helpful because there are tons of women listening to this who likely have men in their lives who are experiencing something similar. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. Your hormones are not the problem. They're just telling you there's something wrong and you've got to dig deeper. Exactly. You know, I tell people all the time, um, IBS is your stomach hurts. Nobody knows why. Yeah. Chronic fatigue is you're tired and nobody knows why. Uh, fibromyalgia is you're hurt. Nobody knows why. Well, erectile dysfunction or hormone dysfunction is your hormones are jacked up. Nobody knows why, or maybe they do. They know your body's stressed out because you could test hormones for that. Your body's all stressed out. But it's too many doctors are not looking for the, okay, let's think about this. Your sex drive's down. Well, sex drive's not conducive to, or it's not a requirement to function. Erections, not a requirement to survive in life. Reproductivity is not a requirement to survive in life. So your body is shutting down non-required processes, shifting you to probably immune and mitochondrial function. So your body can try to figure out how to get well. So that's why some of these other functions don't work. Your hair starts falling out. You feel like you're gaining weight. Your thyroid's not working. I mean, shoot, I even read some studies on PCOS and women and why PCOS is actually a defense mechanism for stress. And it would it would turn on if your body is stressed out and overwhelmed and doesn't feel safe. And then guess what? It can turn off if we can get your body out of that fight or flight state. So it's thinking about things from the, the context of why would my body do this? What does that symptom mean and how do I fix it? Oh, I'm so glad you said all of that. Thank you for saying that. I want to talk a little bit about the basics of Lyme disease, because like I said to you earlier, I haven't really talked about this on the podcast yet in great detail. And so I would love to talk about what Lyme actually is and how it's transmitted, just so everybody is aware. So Lyme disease is a bacteria by itself. So Lyme, which is a... Uh, Borrelia burgdorferi bacteria, that's its actual scientific name. Uh, a spirochete means it looks like a corkscrew and it can burrow into your tissues. It does not like to be in the blood. It burrows into your white tissue, your brain. It can get to your brain in studies in 12 hours. So by the time you get bit and actually see a bullseye rash and can do anything about it, it's already out of the areas usually where antibiotics can fix it, which is why on PubMed there's studies showing antibiotics just aren't enough alone. They are a piece of the puzzle for some. Uh, I personally didn't use antibiotics, but um, I do know that that's you know the medical standard right now. Uh, so so that's what the bacteria is. Now the problem is Lyme disease. The way I stated is. It's more than just the spirochete. It's all the co-infections that go with it. So Babesia, the parasite. Bartonella is another bacteria like cat scratch fever. Um, you have other parasites, viruses, funguses, et cetera, that, that are the co-infections, the friends that typically come with it. Because when a tick bites you, it doesn't just inject you usually with one infection. It can go up to 12 is what we've seen in the, the spit basically from the tick. Oh. So it's not alone. Right. Okay. I mean, I knew I, I had an idea about the co-infections, but I didn't realize there was up to 12. <laughs> that's a lot. I mean, th that's just the tick bite itself. That's not talking about, you know, you can get it from any sort of insect borne vector. So we're talking whether it's from spider bites, tick bites, mosquitoes, you can get it from mother to child. So I oftentimes will have women come in that are sick. Like I can't get pregnant. Uh, Infertility is an issue. I've given up trying just make me feel better doc. And, and I go, okay. And young and dumb me starts working on them. Older me now says, protect yourself because three or four months from now, the inflammation is going to come down. Your hormones are going to start regulating back to normal and you might get pregnant mid treatment. And I don't want you to have a kid that then becomes my next patient because they have Lyme disease too. So from mother to child's away. And then there are a lot of conversations about sexually transmitted. I've seen some cases where I think that's possible, but I, I, I haven't 
that dove deep enough and there's not enough evidence out there for me to say 100%, although I would say it's probably true. Whoa. Okay. That's way more than I ever imagined. And anyone who's listening, I'm sure too. It's funny because I live in the Connecticut countryside now. I live mm -hmm. some somewhat close to Lyme, Connecticut. I believe that's where mm -hmm. uh, Lyme disease, what Lyme disease was named after. Um, anyways, I feel the tick problem here is out of control and it's like playing whack-a-mole having three dogs and two acres, not to mention when we go hiking. And I feel like I live in perpetual fear of all of us getting Lyme or some co-infection. Is there anything you can tell me to make me feel better about this? <laughs> oh, there's so many things I can tell you to make you feel better about this. Okay, thank I God. love hiking. I go skiing. I go <laughs> mountain climbing. I There's ticks everywhere in Missouri. Same problem. I oh, have, okay. I have a lot of acres. I don't fear it at all. And I've had Lyme disease, right? So I'll talk throughout this, this podcast about why. But the biggest thing is, is your immune system matters. Your nervous system matters. And if you're all stressed out and not sleeping enough and not eating enough calories because you're trying to lose weight or whatever reasoning is out there. It stresses your body and it weakens your immune system and it makes you vulnerable to whatever next infection is coming. Right. So the reason why I'm not worried about ticks is I'm like, bring it on. Like I, you can bite me. My immune system is going to respond appropriately because I do these things and, I, and my body is healthy. And I also do things throughout the year to support myself. Like I do a parasite cleanse today. Um, I just went on Instagram. I was like, Hey everybody, like the full moon's coming. So get ready for your full moon parasite cleanse so that you can keep your gut clean. So you can keep your immune system working appropriately because that is so important as a portion of our journey and through life is optimizing the systems that we have, um, because your body's built to defend you against infection and toxin. Yes. Okay. I love that you said this because my husband and I are currently also doing a parasite mold cleanse. Um, so I appreciate you saying that. And I, I feel like I would love to come back to the co-infection. So you mentioned a few of them and you mentioned like up to 12 um, potentially uh, viruses or bacteria that are, you know, that come with the ticks. How does all of this make Lyme more problematic? Is it just sort of like a full on assault on the immune system? It is. So the big thing about Lyme is it's called the, the great mimicker because it can create 150 different symptoms. Well, part of the problem with that is it's because it's not one problem. It's not one bacteria. It's all these little frenemies. They, they all come at you and, and then they weaken you. So other things come in. So when people ask me, what are the symptoms of Lyme disease? Hmm. Like, well, it's kind of complicated and, and it honestly gets complicated whether you're talking about parasites or other things, but when it's Lyme, I'm like, okay, we may have muscle and joint aches. So you're like, hands get achy. You feel like you're getting arthritis. You get headaches. Uh, you can get cardiovascular symptoms where your heart actually starts to have pains, but you go to the cardiologist. They say everything looks normal. Yeah. You get brain fog, fatigue. It gets inflammation in your brain because it's getting up there causing immune responses, which leads to anxiety and depression. So these are all common side effects of Lyme disease. But then when you add Babesia in, and now you start having palpitations and you start really going further into the arthritis where you get like RA like symptoms, uh, rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. And then you add in with that virus symptoms. So now you have EBV and chronic fatigue. So it's one of them gets in your body and starts weakening you. So your immune system, instead of being hundred percent, which it probably wasn't anyway, if it could take hold. So your immune system, let's say it was a 50% to start. Now it's at 40. Well, then you eat sushi and now you get a parasite and then that parasite weakens you to 30. So now EBV, Epstein bar flares, and now you're down to 20. And, and now we're really having a problem because you're defenseless and everything's coming in. So that's the problem with Lyme disease is it's opening the gate to so many other problems. And as you get more anxious, that takes away energy from you. And as your hormones dysregulate, and then you start taking bioidenticals that take a lot of liver, liver strength because extra added in hormones require more liver function to process them. So then that takes effort, right? So it's this big picture that you have to see. And when somebody comes into me and it's been 10 years of chronic illness and the number one thing that they say is I want to lose weight and get rid of my hot flashes. And I'm like, Whoa, <laughs> yes, I hear you. We're putting that on the list. That is our goal, but I need you to be able to get out of bed first because you're bedridden. It's, I mean, when I hear you saying all of this, I can think of so many clients over the years. Actually, I'm just thinking of someone who I, I had had a conversation with the other day and 
I feel like the goals are always really surface level because, you know, that's our society and I get it, but it just goes so much deeper, like you're describing. And and what you said about the, you know, symptoms that someone might come to you with that, you know, they just maybe need, to, they think they need to take hormones or hormone replacement therapy, but really that has nothing to, that is literally not at all the solution. It's so much deeper. Um, do you see this more often than not? Like, I think, I guess where my question is um, with Lyme disease or with any of these co-infections, uh, do you feel like this is sort of like the underlying cause of all of uh, so many people's problems? Like how prevalent is it? So the, oh man, how do I answer this <laughs> no. question? So um, hard to ask it and answer bring, it. <laughs> bring me a person with a diagnosed symptom. I'm going to say symptom because for me to make it a diagnosed disease, there's few diseases that I know of that are not caused by an infection, a toxin, or a trauma. So find me symptoms that I can't relate back to those three things. And it's very, very rare yeah. because MS, right? Multiple sclerosis. If you do a study, which it's been done, there's a hundred brains autopsied. 100 out of 100 had nematode parasites, 25 had Lyme disease. Oh my gosh. ALS, I was talking to a clinic, that's their specialty, which is honestly one of the worst things out there because it kills you within a couple of years. You just lose all the muscle function in your body. Your brain wastes away. It's, it's a horrible disease. I've talked to a clinic that that is their specialty. They have sound zero people that did not have Lyme disease. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So. Is it correlation or causation? It's hard to say. But when clients come to me, whether it's anxiety, depression, menstrual issues, I'm just like, okay, what is causing this? Those are the symptoms. Absolutely. We need to get rid of them. But what is causing your problem? And it's usually toxins like mold, glyphosate, heavy metal toxicity. You said you're up in Connecticut. I have yet to find a person that I've worked with in the... Uh, New Hampshire, Connecticut area that did not have radioactive elements in their bodies because it's in the ground and yeah. it's either right out in the basement, it's in the ground, it's in the water supply. Yeah. Well, uranium. What, what, Our uranium is, is high. It's so what, funny. Yeah. On a, on a, um, an HDMA test, both my husband and I, our uranium is high. Yeah. And what does that do to you? It suppresses your immune system. Yeah. And if I look at an organic acid test for the person with all that metal, their mitochondria is shut down. What does your mitochondria do? It makes energy. What else does it do? Regulate your hormones. What else does it do? Regulate your immune system. So now you're immune compromised, low energy, and your hormones are out of whack. So every person that's listening to this podcast, because of what your name of your podcast is, falls probably into the category of most of those. Maybe they don't know about their immune system as much, but uranium does it, mold does it. So I'm always looking for what is the causation so that I can figure out how to unwind this. Because my goal is not to be one of your doctors, it's to be your last doctor. And it's not to be your last doctor because I put you on all this junk and I just have to manage it. It's so that I can get you well, get you a proper healthy lifestyle that's got a nutrient dense diet with appropriate life patterns and off all the supplements. Like I don't like taking supplements, I use them. But I don't like taking them because then I'm like, I, I got to have something I got to do. And, and is it okay to take beef liver or minerals? I'm sure. But my goal is to like, let's get you to health. Yeah. Amen to that. So can we talk a little bit more about the menstrual symptoms or the hormone symptoms? Because I feel like so many of us are just sort of treating the surface. And like you said, that seems to be the case in your practice, um, or at least in the people who come to your practice. So how does Lyme and these co-infections uh, impact our hormones? Oh, they, they're a wrecking ball. So I can remember <laughs> five, six years ago, I had a, a young girl, she was about 19 or 20. And she came to college in Missouri and was not was pretty close to my office. And I work virtually now, so I work with people all around the country. But this young girl, during her menstrual cycle, could not go to class, could not walk across the parking lot. So for like three days, she was basically bedridden, dysfunctional, and birth control and supplements weren't cutting it. Yeah. 
And she had other symptoms. She had migraines. She had body pain, some other things that were going along. And that's why she came into me. It had nothing to do with the cycle, but the cycle was a symptom. And at the time, I just didn't know this. So I start working with her and we got to parasites and we got to strongyloides parasite, which is a nematode. It looks like rice when it comes out of you. And we started working on that. And within a month, her cycle went from shut you down in life to almost normal. Had she ever been told she has endometriosis or some other debilitating condition? I don't believe she had at the time. Okay. I've dealt since then, since learning, you know, seven years later, you know, I, I talk with women every single day that come into my clinic that have endometriosis or, you know, some other diagnosis, PCOS or something that has to do with hormones that are creating really terrible cycles, yep. whether it's over ovulation, whether it's over menstruation. Um, and we, we work with I work with it in a couple of ways. So I'll run a salivary hormone test along with my hair test, oat test, blood test. And we're like, okay, so you're estrogen dominant and we, we can do a, a cycle mapping, but I don't typically start there because that's a pretty costly thing. And I figure if I can get rid of the causes, then it's going to get better anyway. So then we, we go in and, and we, based off of their symptomatology, we, we may add in a calcium to group rate during a portion of their cycle or a DEM during portions of their cycle, depending upon if their flares are period or over the, the, the actual menstrual cycle or over the ovulation part. Right. And by doing that, it can decrease symptoms short-term while we're doing the work so that eventually we don't need that calcium to glucurate or DEM and it's actually just regulated on its own. However, and this is on the top of my mind because I just had a client call me. She's like, man, you, you put me on that calcium to glucurate. That changed my life. She's like, I got four more days of the month back. Like I was functional. It wasn't horrible. Like I, I was normal. I had a little bloat and a little inflammation, but that's it. That's she goes lovely. this month though. Oh, she's like, I felt like I fell back. It wasn't as bad, but it was only like 50% as good as the, 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 the previous month. And I go, okay, well talk to me. Like, were you stressed out? Did you eat poorly? Did you drink? Did you start a new protocol? She's like, well, you started me on a protocol, but I didn't read your instructions. And I was only taking a fifth of the dose. And then four days before my cycle, I upped the dose to full dose. Oh. I was like, oh, I was like, I didn't tell you this is my fault. And I, and I just want to preach from the top of the mountain to women, do not start something that's difficult for you, like a new detox protocol, whether it's, whether it's for toxins or infections, don't start a brand new hard workout. Don't start a brand new hard job. That's just stressing you to the max three, four days before your cycle, because that extra stress, when you're already going into a cycle that creates some inflammation, some histamine response is just going to push your cycle to be worse. And if you're healthy, it doesn't really matter. But if you have horrible cycles, you need to pay attention. Oh, totally. And so what do you think about um, like conditions like endometriosis, for instance? You know, that's that's obviously a big one. It's a very debilitating condition. Uh, in your experience, have you seen pretty much across the board, people have Lyme or some other underlying infection that is worsening the symptoms and that someone could have endometriosis. And once they address all of these underlying contributors, I uh, could live in relative peace with their cycle. A lot of times we can see some pretty significant progress with somebody that has endometriosis. If we can get rid of those inflammatory factors, which are all the things I mentioned, parasites, Lyme, mold, it's super unique to the person. Yeah. I, I will say that for whatever reason, strongyloides, that parasite I mentioned earlier, affects a lot of ovaries and causes a lot of really horrible cycles. So if we can get through that area of our protocol, oftentimes we can see some really significant changes in cycle. Now, as far as endometriosis specifically, if you've never had any surgeries, it's seemingly easier to make progress and, and, and resolve the situation. If you've had the surgeries, it leaves scar tissue. It's just the way it is. And that scar tissue then may create a little bit of a more difficult situation. It's not to say you won't have luck or you won't have the possibility of seeing progress. It just, I see 
a little bit less success with those types of people. And I'm not promising perfection in this situation because sometimes it's get everything gone, get really good. Sometimes I've seen clients have to still go get some work done um, outside of what my scope is or what I focus on, but, but they're in a much better place. Because if you go and get a surgery when your body's at its weakest point, it doesn't heal right. It just kind of scars over. If you go and do something when your body's really well, it can actually recover. And then there's other pieces of the puzzle that you can add to this. So like if you've had surgeries, doing things like externally, not internally, but externally, if you've had hysterectomies and things, doing neural therapy, so actually injecting or doing some sort of acupuncture or release on the scars can help the acupuncture meridians actually communicate better throughout the body because scars block electrical conductivity in the body, which is what acupuncture is, is, is electrical conductivity for communication in the body. Right. Right. And so when it comes to menstrual cycle symptoms, I know you were talking about this a little bit, but I would love to go a little bit deeper. Lyme, all of these other things can definitely flare up our menstrual cycle problems and make them worse. Cause I, I hear that often, right? I've I, I never really had any problems or they were minor and then they've progressively gotten worse. And of course that could be, you know, gut related issues, liver detoxification problems, whatever, all of these things. But obviously like having all of these underlying issues will exacerbate the gut issues or the liver problems or whatever. So I feel like I just hear that so often. It's just getting worse, Nicole. I don't know why. Well, what is a liver problem? What is a gut problem? Right. Yeah. You know, true. Okay, your your liver is showing up with AST, ALT, which are blood markers that are elevated. It is tender to the touch under your right rib cage or across the lower part of your right rib cage. These are liver symptoms. You have acne that's coming up. You don't process fat as well. These are all liver gallbladder symptoms, right? So you have a liver problem. What do we do for it? We don't just go remove the gallbladder. We don't just throw bitters and tudka and milk thistle at it because that's supporting the physiology sure it's not for getting rid of the problem right the problem is you have liver flukes in your liver or lyme disease endotoxins which is bacteria poop oh. is too much for your body and your liver isn't keeping up so it's it's backing up and then it's starting to become damaged and now it's irritated and inflamed and your c-reactive protein in your body which is a protein created by the liver that signifies inflammation is going up so that's what a liver problem is. And the causation is downstream and in, in the mindset of most people. And it's maybe you're living in mold. Maybe you're drinking radioactive water. So what's a gut problem? Well, my bloating is here. I'm constipated. I'm not going very often. Um, it cramps. Maybe it's, I just can't lose weight. I mean, shoot, that's part of the, this problem that a lot of these people see. Okay, why? Well, it's not because your life is, perfectly happy. Well, if you're stressed out, the small intestine is the emotional organ. So if you get stressed out, then immune system problems happen in the gut. You start attacking foods, you get food allergies, and then there's damage done to your gut, which causes dysbiosis. Or you eat inorganic food, like food that's not organic. So then now you're eating food with pesticides on it that are antibacterial, that are antibacterial. So then it kills off your good gut stuff and then bad gut bacteria get out of control. So now you have SIBO. Or you love sushi, but you also take Tums, or you also take uh, a Meprazole medication, which is a, a acid blocking drug, or you're stressed out from work, which is why you went out with the girls and you got sushi and had wine, but because you're stressed out, it lowered your hydrochloric acid, and now your digestive tract is vulnerable. Well, sushi is a raw meat that definitely carries parasites. I eat it, but I also make sure that my digestive tract can protect itself with the hydrochloric acid, which burns up the parasites. And now I don't get a gut issue, right? So no matter what your symptom is, let's look at why. So if your menstrual cycle is a wreck, is it because you're stressed out and your cortisol is elevated, which dysregulates your metabolism for your estrogen and your progesterone, and it pushes you into an estrogen dominant state because your body's, well, maybe one of the reasons is it's not processing the estrogen appropriately when you have it. So then you're backed up with high estrogen because your body's just not getting to it because you have too much cortisol from your stress. Or, you know, maybe you're scrolling Instagram too often and you're, you're judging yourself, which people do a lot. And, and I'm just like, get off there, get off of that thing that is stressing you out, whatever it is, but also it can be 
that you live in a moldy place that backed up your liver that then you don't process the estrogen and, and now your estrogen dominant and your cycles are thrown off and they're miserably painful because your body has too much of that excess estrogen hormone, but it's not an estrogen problem. Yep. It's a liver problem or it's a, it's a different problem. Yep. I know. I keep telling women that it's estrogen dominance is not the problem. <laughs> Everybody wants the fix for the estrogen dominance or the low progesterone. And I'm like, that's not it. <laughs> you got it. You got to keep going down a few layers. So with relation to the sort of parasites, lime mold, because parasites can harbor mold, correct? They can have Parasites mold. are a multicellular larger organism that can block up your gut release endotoxins that make you constipated, get in your liver and actually take up space. Lyme disease can live inside a parasite. Oh, right. Okay. And mold also could live inside a parasite because they're both single cellular organisms or can be, right? Mold can be larger, but can be single cellular. It can be very small, microscopic inside of a parasite. So because of that, I actually start with parasites often when I'm working with somebody, if that's a part of the problem that we're working on, because I want to get rid of what's harboring the other things and also what's stopping you from being able to detoxify or clear out your body. Right. No, it's so helpful. And so what, you know, what's the process for someone who's listening, for instance, and they're freaking out <laughs> because everything you're saying makes so much sense. What, what does someone do? Where do they start? Well, you start by taking a step back. Just separate yourself from your condition for a moment. I know it's not easy to do. It's really hard to do. But if you can step back for a moment and you just look at the symptoms and then you go, okay, they're symptoms. They're not who I am. They're not what my body is. They're not where I'm going to be trapped forever. They're symptoms. What could be causing these symptoms? Let's meet with a doctor or do the research myself. However you want to do that. Let's get some tests or work with somebody that can symptomatically help support you by being able to understand those things and understand what's happening in my body. Is my mitochondria suppressed? Do we have toxicities? Are there infections? Do I have enough nutrients to support the opportunity to heal? If you're so depleted that you can't heal, of course, all the antimicrobial herbs and detox supplements didn't work. There are people that come into my clinic they have no potassium on a hair test. And I'm like, of course you pass out when you stand up. You have no blood volume. No, you have no sodium potassium pump, which is part of your cells ability to move things in and out. Of course you have no energy. Okay. Let's rebuild that. Like, wow. My energy went up when you gave me potassium and these supplements that I already took from the other guy are starting to work. Yes. So get a, a base amount of knowledge about yourself. A lot of you probably have, it. you've done labs, you've done research, you, you know, some of this, and then look at if I'm not getting well, is there something in my environment that is not allowing me to get well? So do I live in a safe place? Does that have mold? Does it have radon? Is the water clean? So I, I just, in my notes, it says air, food, water, hygiene. Have we covered those four spaces and made sure that they're clean? Then do I feel safe in that environment? Because if I don't feel safe in that environment, and my nervous system is constantly telling me to be afraid and be in fight or flight, I'm going to have a really hard time shifting the energy to detox and heal and recover if it's in protect mode all the time. And I'm constantly hypervigilant looking around and over my shoulder and not sleeping. Yeah. So safe place, feel safe, get the information. And then, then it's the stuff that everybody wants to talk about. Then I could go into... In about 70% of cases, it's parasites, then bacteria, which includes Lyme and SIBO and H. pylori and Bartonella, mycoplasma, mold, then radioactive elements, environmental toxins and heavy metals, kind of which one's worse for you. And then if you have any candida yeast left or Epstein-Barr markers left, then we'll talk about those, which a lot of times those go away. And when you get through all of the stuff I've already mentioned, guess what's gone? Hormone issues mitochondrial issues, autoimmune symptoms, anxiety, fear, depression, those things are usually gone. And if not, then, then we can discuss what may need to be put in there as a part of that piece. And if you did the feel safe part at the start, then there's a lot less likely to have those emotional fight or flight stuffs at the end. 
I used to just not talk about the fight or flight till the end. And I'd get people that were like, I love my life, my kids, my family, my job. I'm still depressed. And I'm like, oh crap, what happened? Like, what did I miss? Oh, brain patterns matter. And like throwing a baseball, if you learned how to throw it improperly, you have to be taught to throw it correctly. If you learned to be anxious because your mom was, or because you got Lyme disease 10 years ago, which triggered fight or flight anxiety, I have to train you out of it with things like limbic retraining or neurofeedback. This is, I mean, so, so helpful. And I feel like you're such a wealth of knowledge. Um, is there anything that you want to share with anyone who's listening? Um, just as like final thoughts to sum up all that you've shared here today. I mean, hope is everything. So if you're listening, you're not your symptoms. Your symptoms are signs of what it takes to get back to you. So look at them as information, not a curse. Let them lead you back to being vibrant and being able to play with your kids, hang out with your husband or wife, to be able to enjoy life, go out with your friends, drink that glass of wine that's been triggering you lately because you should be able to have a glass of wine without being triggered. <laughs> there is hope. You can reach health. It's not always quick. It's not always easy. But knowing that I've worked with a lot of people who have fought for a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, even 50 years, and still been able to get well, have hope and keep fighting. Thank you so, so much. This was an amazing interview. And I would love for you to just tell everyone where they can find you and your life-changing work. Uh, so you find me with my name, Dr. Jabin Moore, spelled J-A-B as in boy, A-N. Um, I've got Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, website. Uh, we put free information out all the time because people just need to know that like you don't have to be trapped in these symptoms that there is a way out. Thank you. Thank you. I could not agree with you more. Thank you again so much for your time, Jamin. This was amazing. Thanks for having me. That's a wrap. Be sure to click that subscribe button to join me for more Girl Talk Gone Menstrual in upcoming episodes. But in the meantime, check out my latest period party episode. And if you're looking for a deeper dive into your hormones, go ahead and take my period quiz at nicolejardim.com quiz.